Hi. What I want to do in this video is to go through some of the extra characteristics of folds that are required uh, for A-level. So this takes us beyond the work you did um, at AS uh, to be able to describe folds. We're going to add in a, just a, a little bit more uh, complexity to these structures. Now, the things we're going to look at here do build on what we did uh, in section uh, F2 uh, for AS level. You might want to go back to uh, the video Elements of Folds, just to remind you of some of the things that we uh, talked about there, some of the ideas and some of the language that we use. What I want to focus on in this video is the features of folds that are new uh, at A-level. Okay, we have a simple diagram of some folds. Now, there are some features on here that I would hope you'd be able to recognize. The hinges of the folds, uh, where the bed is actually bent, the point of flexure, if you want the uh, proper term. We've got the limbs then, the uh, dipping beds in between uh, each of the hinge points. The axis of the fold, marking its middle, uh, showing the hinge points along one particular bed. And of course the axial plane, this uh, imaginary two-dimensional uh, surface linking together the hinge points on lots of different beds. And that gives us uh, a series of upfolds as antiforms, downfolds, as sinforms. Okay. That's the terminology we've already covered. There are, though, some new ideas, some new um, bits of terminology that we need to get a grip on for our, um, for our A level study. The first of these is the idea of a fold having a wavelength. Now, the wavelength, as I've marked uh, on this diagram, is the distance between two similar hinge points. So you'll see on this one I've marked them from uh, a sinformal hinge point to the next sinformal hinge. The second of these is the amplitude of the fold. It's a, a measure of its size. In fact, well, both of these um, features are a measure of the size of the fold. Now, for um, comparability, I suppose, with um, when we look at waves in, in uh, science and physics, for example, for this, uh, the amplitude is half the height of the wave. So half the vertical distance between a sinformal hinge and an antiformal hinge. We can also measure the interlimb angle. As the name would suggest, this is the angle between uh, the two limbs. We'll talk more about that in a moment. And we also need to consider uh, another feature of the axial plane, uh, its attitude. To look at this in a bit more detail, we can look at some of the geometry of these folds. We can see here that we've got uh, a diagram of a, a folded bed with the hinge points marked on as white circles. We can measure the wavelength of these folds by measuring the distance between uh, these two similar hinges, as we can see here. We can also measure the amplitude of these folds. Uh, by looking at half uh, the vertical height between two dissimilar hinges. But in particular, I want to consider this idea of the interlimb angle. Now you can see on this uh, diagram, we've got some quite rounded folds here. So to calculate the angle, I've drawn two tangents 
to the limbs. We can calculate this by looking at the dip of these beds. So if we've got uh, the dip of the two uh, limbs there, uh, shown, measured from horizontal. Now those two dips, together with the interlimb angle, will form a triangle. So the internal angle of that triangle is going to equal 180. So we can calculate the interlimb angle by taking those two dips away from 180 degrees. Once we've got that angle calculated, we can then start to determine what type of fold um, we're looking at, how we can actually describe it. This diagram shows us the difference between them. The interlim angle defines um, what type of uh, description we can give to the fold. You can see that there are some marked on already. The ones we need to know for the syllabus are open folds that have an interlimb angle of somewhere between 120 and 70 degrees. Tight folds have an angle, an interlimb angle somewhere between 30, maybe about 5 degrees. Isoclinal folds have an interlimb angle of about 5 degrees down to 0. 0 uh, degree interlimb angle is where we have uh, the limbs of the fold that are actually parallel. You can see from the diagram that these descriptive terms progressively create more uh, of an idea of compression, more crustal shortening caused by this tectonic stress. We also need to consider the attitude of axial planes. Again, uh, on this diagram we have uh, a bed that's been folded and some axial planes that are shown by the series of dotted lines. We can have a fold that's upright. Uh, where well, the axial plane is vertical, often found in symmetrical folds, but not always. An inclined fold, where the axial plane uh, is at an angle uh, to the vertical, uh, often found in uh, asymmetrical folds, but not always. If we keep um, tilting these beds, usually as a result of more compression, we can get what we call an overturned fold. Now, if you look at the two limbs of uh, this fold, either side of the axial plane that's marked, you'll see that the bottom one here is actually upside down, hence the description of it being an overturned fold. The base of the bed is above the top. The final description we look at here is a recumbent fold one where the axial plane is almost horizontal. The other difference between the folding we've done before and A-level folding is the occurrence of what we call plunging folds. These are quite common uh, in nature. These folds work in the same way as the ones we studied for AS. The only difference being the hinge of these folds, the, the axis of the fold, if you like, is inclined. We describe that as a plunge. It gives a very distinctive V-shaped pattern uh, to the outcrop of beds. Now, we're gonna spend a lot more time in class working on this, but you need to be aware that this is the case. So, in conclusion, we have a new set of descriptive terms that we can apply to our understanding of 
folds. We can add more complexity, more subtlety into our description and therefore our analysis of these structures. Don't forget to come up with your interesting question and bring it to class. I'll see you then.